In this short video, we're going to look at chain rules for multivariable functions. So the key to remembering these, instead of trying to just memorize a bunch of rules, is to always start with a linear approximation. Now, if you have a function of two variables, what we want to remember is that delta z equals partial f with respect to x times delta x plus partial f with respect to y times delta y. Or if you had three variables, say w is a function of x, y, and z, then what you want to remember is delta w is the partial of f with respect to x times delta x plus the partial of f with respect to y times delta y plus the partial of f with respect to z times delta z. Then I can always derive the chain rule that I need. Um, suppose that I have a function of x and y, and then x and y in turn are both functions of a single variable t, which really means that z is ultimately a function of only t. So let's find a chain rule to calculate dz dt. So notice that it's dz. There's no partial here when we're talking about taking the derivative with respect to t because we said that z ultimately is a function of only t, only one variable. Well, we're going to start with our linear approximation. And I'd like to get some kind of, well, approximation of dz dt. I'd like to get delta z over delta t. So I'll divide every term by delta t. Then I'll let delta t go to 0. And in the limit, delta z over delta t will be dz dt. Delta x over delta t will be dx dt. And delta y over delta t will be dy dt. So my chain rule becomes dz dt is partial of f with respect to x times dx dt plus partial of f with respect to y dy dt. So the change of z with respect to t gets a contribution from x and gets a contribution from y. All right, let's look at an example where maybe we have uh, two variables, x and y, and they're both functions of two additional variables, s and t. So now z depends on two variables, but ultimately just s and t. And since z depends on more than one variable, we'll be talking about taking partial derivatives. So we'd like to find a chain rule for the partial of z with respect to t. So again, I'll start with the linear approximation. And then to get an approximation for partial z with respect to t, I'll divide by delta t. Then let delta t goes to 0. And in the limit now, delta z over delta t should become the partial of z with respect to t. Delta x over delta t is the partial of x with respect to t. And delta y over delta t becomes partial y with respect to t. Remember, there's partial if the x is a function of more than one variable, and y is a function of more than one variable. z is a function of more than one variable. So my chain rule becomes partial z with respect to t is partial f with respect to x times partial x with respect to t plus the contribution from y, so partial of f with respect to y times the partial of y with respect to t. And using a similar type of reasoning, our chain rule for partial z with respect to s, s looks very similar. So let's work out an example. We'd like to find partial z with respect to t and partial z with respect to x, given that z equals 
tangent of x minus y, but x depends on s and t. x equals s squared plus t squared, and y also depends on s and t. y equals 1 minus 2 times s times t. So I need all the partials. I'll need the partial of z with respect to s. I'll need the partial of z with respect to x, the partial of x with respect to s, the partial of z with respect to y, the partial of y with respect to s. So let's take those partials. Partial z with respect to x, it's just going to be secant squared. The partial of the derivative of the inside, partial derivative of the inside with respect to x is just 1. When I take the partial of z with respect to y, I still get a secant squared of x minus y. But now the partial derivative of the inside with respect to y is negative 1. So I just wrote a minus sign out in front. The partial of x with respect to s is just 2s. And the partial of y with respect to s is just minus 2t. So I can go ahead and make my substitutions in the formula. And in general, we're going to leave things in this form where we have all four variables. We have x, y, uh, s, and t. We could take the extra step and replace the, the uh, s squared plus t squared in the place of x and um, 1 minus uh, 2st in the place of y. And we might even get some simplification there, but I don't think it's worth it. It's not what we're trying to practice here. All right, and let's do the same thing uh, to get the partial of z with respect to t. The new thing that we need to calculate is the partial of x with respect to t, which would be 2t, and the partial of y with respect to t, which would be minus 2s. And so I can go ahead and make the substitutions into my formula and find an expression for the partial of z with respect to t. Let's do another example. Here we're trying to find the partial of w with respect to r, where w itself is a function of three variables, x, y, and z. And each of x, y, and z are functions of r, s, and t. So uh, what would our formula be for a partial of w with respect to r? Well, maybe I don't remember, but I remember to start with the linear approximation. And then to get the an approximation of partial of w with respect to r, I'll go ahead and divide everything by delta r let delta r go to 0, and then I'll find that I'll have partial of w with respect to r is the partial of w with respect to x times the partial of x with respect to r, added to partial of w with respect to y times partial of y with respect to r. And then finally, we add partial of w with respect to z times the partial of z with respect to r. So the partial of w with respect to x, let's just carefully calculate these. There's no x in the second term, so just the partial of the first term. Using the power rule, I get 4x cubed y. Partial of w with respect to y. OK, I see y in both terms. So in first term, the partial will be x to the fourth, and the second term, 2y, z cubed. Partial of w with respect to z. Uh, z only occurs in the second term, so its partial is 3y squared, z squared. Now I've got to take the partial of x with respect to r, so I'm going to get s times e to the power of t. The partial of y with respect to r, I'll just get s squared e to the negative t. And finally, the partial of z with respect to r, I'll have 2rs times sine t. So I've got my formula here. Now I'll go ahead and make my substitutions. 
for all of the partial derivatives. Now, one thing that we can do with the chain rule uh, is find a simpler way of performing implicit differentiation. So let's start with uh, when we have two variables, an equation with two variables. And we're going to say y is an implicit function of x. Now we're going to assume here that we've rewritten the equation so one side equals 0. And then what we'll do is we'll take the partial with respect to x of each side. So I've got this function of x and y. Let's go ahead and apply the chain rule to that. So I'm going to take the <clears throat> partial of f with respect to x. I'll multiply that times, well, x, we said, is only a function of x itself. But x is a function of one of, of a variable. So I would be taking the derivative of x with respect to x. y is also a function of only one variable. It's an implicit function of x. So that's why I have dy dx, not partials here. But f is a function of two variables, so I have partial f, partial y. That would be the derivative of the left-hand side. The derivative of 0 is still 0. So the notation uh, is useful here. I mean, if I take uh, dx over dx, it should be 1. And that makes sense. So we take the partial derivative of x with respect to x, or the derivative of x with respect to x, I'm going to get 1. So now let's solve what's left over for dy dx. And I'll get this dy dx equals the negative partial of f with respect to x over the partial of f with respect to y. So as a memory aid, Remember that uh, we've kind of got things upside down here. The dy is on the top here, but in our equations, the partial y is at the very bottom. We might want to rewrite it that way uh, using the subscript notation as well. So let's see how this is useful. It's kind of a strange formula, but it's actually really helpful if, to, for, to find partial derivatives. So I'm given an equation, x cubed plus y cubed equals 6xy. I'm told y is an implicit function of x, and I'd like to find dy dx. This is a calc 1 problem, and we could use calc 1 techniques. But let's try this new technique. First, let's make one side equal to 0. And then this left-hand side will be our function. So I have capital F of xy is x cubed plus y cubed minus 6xy. And I just need to calculate its partial derivatives. The partial with respect to x is 3x squared minus 6y. Partial with respect to y is 3y squared minus 6x. That's a pretty simple computation to perform. And now using my formula for dy dx, it would just be the opposite of the partial with respect to x over the partial with respect to y. And so I'll write that as 6y minus 3x squared all over 3y squared minus 6x. Now we can use this technique with three variables as well. Suppose that I have a function of x, y, and z, and it's an equation really that's equaling zero. And we know that z is an implicit function of two variables, x and y. Then if I take the partial with respect to x of both sides, then using my chain rule, I'll have the partial of f with respect to x times dx dx, the partial of f with respect to y times dy dx, and then the partial of f with respect to z times dz dx, not dz dx, partial z with respect to x. z is a function of two variables. x and y really are independent variables, but you could say that x is a function of x and y is a function of y. 
and that's going to equal zero. So let's look at this. Of course, the partial or the derivative of x with respect to x is just one. But now, y doesn't depend on x at all. It, it's not changing at all. How do, what is the rate of change of y with respect to x? As x changes, y do, is independent. It does not change at all. So that term is going to be zero. And now I can solve the remaining two terms for partial of z with respect to x. And I'll get negative partial of f with respect to x over partial of f with respect to z. And as a memory aid, again, um, Yeah, the z is on top here, but it's on the bottom there. Sorry about that. Just had a little momentary lapse. So it's on the top here, on the bottom there. And I could write it using the subscript notation as well. So uh, if I had gone back and taken the partial with respect to y, I would get a similar formula. The partial of z with respect to y would be the opposite of the partial with respect to y over the partial with respect to z. So let's look at this equation. I'm given yz plus x times the natural log of y equals z squared. And z is an implicit function of x and y. We could try to use the quadratic formula to solve for z explicitly, but get very complicated. And there's plenty of cases where it'd be impossible to solve for z explicitly. So let's use implicit differentiation. But instead of using implicit differentiation using our classic technique, let's use our new formula. So first I'll have to make that equal to zero. So my function of x, y, and z will be yz plus x times natural log of y minus z squared. And let's find the partials. The partial with respect to y is just going to be uh, z plus x over y. Remember that the derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y. The partial with respect to z would be y minus 2z. So our formula tells us that the partial of z with respect to y would be minus f sub y all over f sub z. And so I've got to do something with this minus sign. I could either distribute it across the terms in the numerator to get minus z minus x over y all over y minus 2z. Or maybe I could distribute it among the terms in the denominator. So keep it, this is a little bit tidier than the original expression z plus x over y, so both positives over 2z minus y. Well, that's uh, the examples that I have for using the chain rule and implicit differentiation. I hope you found this video useful.